Let's talk about how to format text once you have it created. To create the text, I've got my type tool, I've created a text box, and I've typed out the text that I wanted to be inside of that text box. Remember, if your text is too large for the box, for instance, if it looks like this, you won't see all of your text. Additionally, you'll see a little red plus sign at the very bottom right hand corner of your type box. This means you have overset text and all you need to do is adjust the size of your text to make it smaller or make your text box bigger so we can see everything. To format the text, we're going to choose our type tool and we're going to highlight the text that we want to work with. I'm going to bring it over here so we can see the options as we work on them. So with my type tool, I've got it selected. I'm only going to cover the basics of formatting. We'll go into the more advanced stuff later. Look at the very top left corner of your, uh, your screen. The first thing we'll see are the different fonts that we can choose from. Additionally, you get a little sample of what that font would look like. If there's an arrow off to the side, you have additional formatting that's available for that font. So for instance, this one comes in regular, oblique, which is another name for italics, and bold. Others can be just regular or bold. Some of them don't have any other formatting at all. When you choose a font, it'll jump and change to that particular uh, font that you have selected. If you want to quickly find a font, let's say I wanted to change this to Times New Roman. I can highlight the name and start typing it out. T-I-M-E-S, there's Times, space, N, and it will automatically jump to Times New Roman. So when I hit return, it will format that very quickly from there. And if I wanted to make it bold underneath here, I can choose the different format to additionally bold that up as well. So that's how to change the font that we're working in. Let's highlight it again. If you need to change the size of your font, this is where this number comes in. Notice the little icon gives you a, a, an idea of what's going to happen to it. I can choose the up or down arrow to make it larger or smaller, or I can choose some predefined sizes from here. No matter what I do, as long as I have it highlighted, that's what will change. If I only had one word highlighted and I started to make a change, only that one word would be affected. That's basic stuff. The second thing I can adjust is the amount of distance between the lines that I have. By default, most fonts come with this preset amount of distance, and this is called the leading of a font. Leading is found underneath the size of our font. Notice that when I increase the size of my font, it automatically increases this number as well. This is because by default it's set to auto, but if I wanted to override that and make my, um, make my words a lot closer, let's choose a number that's smaller than that. Let's choose 36. Notice it gets a little bit closer. The smaller the number, the closer the letting. Conversely, the larger the number, the more distance I can put between it and the more uh, letting that we have. The second kind of formatting we can do uh, allows you to adjust the size and the styling of the font that you already have. So if I already want all of this to be all caps with one click, I can make it all caps. Or if I chose small caps underneath, all of the lowercase letters would become uppercase but smaller. So this kind of comes in handy if you need to quickly format something by underlining it strike through. Every once in a while we'll use these. The final most common way of formatting your text is to adjust the amount of space between the letters. If you want to adjust the spacing between an, an entire row of letters, this is called tracking. So I've got the entire line selected. This bottom number of the A and the V, if I increase it, you can see my letters are starting to space themselves out a lot larger. And if I make the number smaller, they'll become a lot closer together. This comes in handy if I need to fill in a certain amount of area. Notice that when I place more space between the words, they'll push words uh, onto one line or pull them onto another. If I made it smaller, I can choose some predefined tracking, and I can get the letters much, much closer together. If I need to adjust the distance between just two letters, this is what's called kerning. Uh, the biggest example a lot of people like to do is the letters capital A and capital W. Notice that these two letters tend to overlap each other pretty well. Well, if I wanted them to be a lot closer together, 
I can place my cursor between those two letters and now I'm going to adjust this top kerning. Let's set it back to zero. Here's the default. There's that little distance. If I wanted to give more distance between there, there's 200%. Or I can press down and get them a lot closer together. Kerning doesn't happen between all the letters. That's called tracking. So if I was to select multiple letters and then try to choose or change this up, I really can't. It's just going to set it by default, which is either optical, how your eyes read it, or metrics, how the, uh, the, the line spacing should read it. Only when I have one uh, space between two letters can I adjust my kerning. This gets into some more advanced typography, which we'll do a lot later.